Lord tonight. God bless you, Brother Stein. Let's give the Lord a big hand. your Bibles, go with me to Psalm 40. Verse number three. The Bible says in Psalm 40, verse number three, and he hath put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Many shall see it and fear and shall trust in the Lord. This scripture for so many years was one of the most confusing scriptures that I had ever read to me in my own experience. And I want to bring you something out of this scripture tonight. There are many other passages that I'm going to refer to. But just before I do this, I want us to go to the Lord in prayer. And as you're prepare, preparing to pray with me now, I want to thank Brother McCool, Sister McCool, precious people of God, and thank Brother and Sister Stein and all of the families of this church. And thank you very much, all of you who've come tonight. We're in revival, <clears throat> something that's becoming more rare in America. Many churches don't even attempt to have revivals anymore. Amen. But I believe that there is still a revival for those that want it. And I believe we can see a revival in this service tonight. Can we pray? God, in Jesus' name, I ask you to take my feeble lips and my feeble efforts and somehow God put it together. Make something out of it tonight that will bring a new experience into the lives of these people that are here in this service. And God, that they will leave here being forever changed and challenged. And God, we pray for your spirit to hover over us now. In your holy name we pray. Amen. And amen. And everybody say amen. amen. You may be seated. I've read this scripture, and I've read it, and I've read it, and I've read it. And actually, if you go back and pick it all up in verse 1, And I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined to, unto me and heard my cry. He brought me up also out of an horrible pit, out of the miry clay, set my feet upon a rock, and established my goings. Verse 3, And he hath, the Lord, hath put a new song, Everybody say song. song. Say new song. new song. He hath put a new song in my mouth. Even praise unto our God. Many shall hear it. That's the logical word you think you would have there. If God had given you a new song, and God has put a new song in your mouth, then it, you would think that it would say, and many shall hear it. But it doesn't say many shall hear it. It says, and many shall see it. How do you see a song? We can sing a song whenever the service was progressing tonight, and I said and I listened to the praise team here at the church here and then I listen to the singers from the other churches that are represented here and, and I'm thinking about this scripture and these folks were up here singing a song and you that were out there in the audience were enjoying the song and you that were out there in the audience were standing up out of your seat and you were clapping your hands to the rhythm of the song and the only way you could keep in rhythm was because you could hear 
the song. You could hear the rhythm of the song. <coughs> Excuse me. I've got one of those things that makes me cough every 60 seconds. But I pray that I'll be able to overcome that tonight. But you hear a song. And you, and you think about that if, if you couldn't hear the song, and you would maybe think the song was fast and it might be slow and you're clapping your hands, you're not with everybody else. It's a slow song and you're clapping fast because you can't hear the song. We think in terms of a song as something you hear, but we never think of it as something you see. And I've got to ask you the question tonight, how can you see a song? And then... Turning over to Matthew chapter 14. I'm just laying a foundation here. Matthew chapter 14, verse number 22. The Bible said, And straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him unto the other side while he sent the multitude away. When he had sent the multitude away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. When the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. They cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I. Be not afraid. Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, <coughs> bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind, how do you see wind? I can stand outside on a breezy night, put my hand up in the air, and I can feel the breeze hitting my hand. I can feel the breeze hitting my face, but I don't see the breeze. I don't see the wind. How do you see? The Bible said when he saw the wind, boisterous, he was afraid and began to sink. He cried, saying, Lord, save me. Immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand, caught him, and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? I want to read one more passage of Scripture. And I think, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about the passage where Jesus, I'm not going to read that one, but, but, but I've got another one here to read. But I want to refer to a passage where Jesus touched a blind man. And the Bible said that when he touched that blind man, and, and I'm just telling you this. I could turn to all of these and read them, but trust me, they're there. Whenever the Bible said Jesus touched the blind man, the blind man could see men, but he didn't. He saw men as trees walking. And I've often thought about that scripture too, Brother McCool. Did Jesus miscalculate? the touch so that this man didn't get a complete healing the first time Jesus touched him. I cannot accept that kind of reasoning that Jesus would miscalculate how much healing virtue or how much anointing needed to flow into that man so that he could be fully restored and receive his sight. But nevertheless, the Bible said that when he touched that blind man, the man could see, but he could only see other men as trees walking. 
then the Bible said he touched the blind man the second time. And when he touched him the second time, the Bible said that the man proclaimed, I see men clearly. So when Jesus touched him the second time, he could see men clearly. I've come to this conclusion when I looked up that passage that said I see men as trees walking. I looked at that word trees and I found that in the book of Deuteronomy in the Old Testament, the word of God said the tree of the field is as a man's life. So I think what happened there, and we failed to discover it, but what happened there was simply this. When Jesus touched that blind man the first time, he gave him spiritual sight. So that he could begin to see spiritually. Then Jesus touched him the second time and healed his physical body. Amen. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. Come on, brother. A lot of people want God to touch them and heal them, deliver them, set them free. I'm blind. Lord, receive, restore my sight. And they want God to reach down and touch them, but they don't want to receive that spiritual touch. But that blind man could not receive his healing in the natural, in the flesh, until he could see in the spirit, first of all. And when Jesus touched that blind man, he was more concerned with his spirit than he was with the fleshly condition. With the soul, if you will. And Jesus touched him and let him see. And when the man opened his eyes and looked, he saw men as trees walking. He was seeing things from a spiritual perspective. God opened his eyes to let him see in the Spirit. Then when the man could see in the Spirit, he touched him the second time and healed his body so that he could see men clearly walking in the flesh. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight there are many folks who are yearning to see they are crying out to see. They want to see, but they don't want that touch that's required to see. Amen. I, I want to preach to you tonight, and I'm just laying this foundation, but for a few minutes, I want us to talk about these things that I have described to you. And the Bible said in Revelation chapter 3, and in verse 14, And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou wert cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth, because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing. Knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. The next verse he says to the church of Laodicea, I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes, and anoint thine eyes with eye salve, that thou mayest see. This word, eye salve, and anointing the eyes refers to an enlightenment of the Spirit. This is what the notations in my Bible say. And tonight, I feel like we have come to a Laodicean generation, a Laodicean age. We have a church age today that is neither hot nor cold. 
The world, the religious world, is constantly expanding, yet not quite able to discover. Just a few days ago, I was in a conference in Missouri, and I listened to a former Hindu, as this was a lady, and she gave her testimony. She said that as a Hindu, the Hindu believed that there are 330,000 gods. The Hindu Bible has four books, not 66 like ours. They only have four books. She began to quote verses out of those books of the Hindu Bible. And she began to relate to us that the Hindu people believe that they've got those 330,000 gods but in their Hindu Bible it says that there is one God that is above all of the other gods and He is an unknown God. And these Hindu people believe that there's an unknown God that is above all the other ones that they believe in. But yet they don't know who He is. And then their Hindu scripture also says that this unknown God was going to come to earth and be born of a virgin. And the same verse says, and he will die on a tree. Amen. I'm feeling the Holy Ghost. And then you turn to another book in the Hindu scripture, and it says that this unknown God is going to come down and become a bridegroom and marry a bride. And the Hindu people around the world spend their entire lives searching for that unknown God that's going to be born of a virgin and die on a tree and then he's going to become a bridegroom and they say they can't figure out who he is and they don't know who he is. Ladies and gentlemen, they're looking for him but they can't see him. They know that He's there somewhere. They know that He exists. But because, oh hallelujah, because they cannot see that unknown God, they choose then to substitute Him with 330,000 other little gods that they have in their lives. But 330,000 gods do not satisfy the longing and the question in the heart of a Hindu for they still know down inside there is an unknown God somewhere that's above all of the others. They're forever searching and seeking, having ears they hear not, having eyes they see not. Ladies and gentlemen, we are living in a Laodicean age when the world, the religious world, is neither hot nor cold. Amen. And, and we are living in that time when people cannot see what they want to see. I could say tonight and venture to say that in this congregation, in this audience, there are men and women who desire to see God do something but you're not seeing it. There are young people here in this crowd tonight who desire to see the supernatural, but you haven't seen it. I have heard young people gathered in and talking, maybe in conferences and camps. I listen to the conversations of these kids gathered around tables in fellowship, and they're talking about the good things of God, and they talk about all the things, Brother Armstrong, that we believe, but yet I hear them say, I'd like to see something. I'd like to really see God. I, you know, I hear those old timers talk about uh, those things that used to happen. I'd like to see something with my own eyes. Um, and that's where we are right now. We've got a generation that's hungry to see something that they cannot see. Um, hallelujah. And so you see what I'm trying to say to you. Um, the song, David said it long ago. Uh, God has put a new song in my 
heart in my mouth and many shall see the song what he was simply saying is God's putting something inside of me and you're going to see it you're not just going to hear the note not only are you going to hear the tune and the melody but you're going to see it in action my God that's what I come to preach to you tonight about at Crescent Pentecostal Church I'm tired of just hearing it I want to see it the disciples of John came to Jesus can I go a little bit the disciples of John came to Jesus and said he wants to know are you the one we're looking for or do we seek for another Jesus said go tell him the blind see the deaf hear the lame walk hallelujah that's the God I'm looking for the my, my, my. The Bible said Zacchaeus heard that Jesus was coming to town. And the word of the Lord said that Zacchaeus wanted to see him. I don't know how strong that chair is, but I'm going to try it out. Zacchaeus wanted to see Jesus. And Zacchaeus wasn't tall enough to see over all of the crowd that was around him. But Zacchaeus found himself a sycamore tree and he climbed up in the sycamore tree because he wanted to see something he'd been hearing about. I've heard about Jesus. I've heard that he raises the dead. I've heard that he heals the lepers. I've heard that he does all of these things. But I want to see it with my own eyes. Anybody here want to see it tonight? Shout yes. Anybody here want to see God? Shout yes. Anybody here want to see a miracle tonight? Shout yes. Look at somebody right now and tell them, I want to see it. I want to see it. I'm not satisfied talking about it. I'm not satisfied hearing about it. I want to see it happen. Glory, Glory to God. have any notes on this I want to see it I want to see something a few years ago Sister Broadley and I were on our way home from Washington D.C. and we had been up there with the kids doing some sightseeing then uh, stopped and preached in North Carolina. And then she said, on the way home, let's stop at the Smokies a couple of days. We'd been to the Smokies lots of times. And you folks are probably close enough to them, you take them for granted. But those of us that live so many hours away from the Smokies, it's kind of a treat to get to go. She said, let's go to Cade's Cove. I said, all right, baby, we'll go to Cade's Cove. Anything you want, darling, like a good obedient husband. I get any amens? And so I'm driving through that little one-lane road that goes twisting and winding through Cade's Cove. And we come to a point, and it's you. if you've been there, you know it's one lane and it's one way. You can't turn around and come back. You've got to keep going until you go all the way through and finish the course, just like the Apostle Paul. And so, in a way, we were going through there and come to a place where traffic comes to a dead stop. And we wondered what in the world, maybe a bunch of people have found a bear out there, and they're looking at the bear. And we waited for a good little while, and finally traffic started to move again. We went over the ridge to see what all the excitement was, and there were some deer standing there in the field. And people had stopped the traffic and got out with cameras and were making pictures of deer. We have dozens of deer back where I'm from. They come up in the yard and eat the fruit off the tree can't imagine that these people must be from New York or somewhere. They have to stop and get out and make a picture of a deer. Come on, man. Yeah, man. I've hit deer. Come on, I'd like to make a picture of them all right. 
with my scope. Uh -oh. Amen. Don't call a humane society on me. Went on around a little another little place there on Cage Cove, and the traffic stopped again. Maybe this is the Baron. Drove around the curb finally to see what all the excitement was, and it was another little fawn standing there with its mother. People were out making pictures. Drove on down another place, and there the traffic had stopped again, and it was backed up as far as we could see. The traffic was all stopped, and there was a group of people out in the field on up probably a quarter of a mile on up ahead of us. We could see them. They were all standing out there in the field. Looked like maybe 50 people, 75 people, pretty good-sized crowd of people. We, we turned to that field to see what they're all looking at, and we can't see anything. We got out of the van, and we're standing there looking, and there's a, there's a, a, a ditch that comes along and trees and, and brush and and it just goes along the edge of that field and the ditch comes out right there where we are standing and the, I, we, I parked the van on up that way and my wife and I and our four kids Elena, Jacob, Destiny and David all four of the kids were there with us we're standing there pondering when traffic's going to get moving again these people are out there taking pictures of some more deer but we could hear them screaming we couldn't understand what they were saying and we could see those people pointing in our direction. And some of them were waving their hands. We don't know what they're waving about and we don't know what they're screaming about. Brother McCool, I can't figure it out. And then all of a sudden, up out of that ditch, leaped a big black bear. And he's three feet from my son, Jacob. 16-year-old thought he was ready to conquer the whole world. He laughed, look, a bear! And he reached out to pet the thing. And the bear grunts and takes off after him. And we, what, we all went running toward the van. And my son jumped in the van on the driver's side door. And my other son and younger daughter, they jumped in the van uh, of the passage to the back door on the driver's side. My wife and the other daughter went around this way and they got in the van. The bear was chasing all of them and they were all, I made sure everybody was in the van and the bear still out there chasing me around the van. And I went around to the driver's side door to open the door to get in the van and the, my son was sitting there shaking his head, no, go to a different door. And so... Honest to goodness, this happened to me. And so uh, I went back around the other way and I could still hear that bear grunting somewhere in the distance. And I went around to the other side and my wife had the window cracked on the passenger side about like that. She said, you better get in this van before that thing gets you. And, and I'm pulling on all the doors and my wife and kids had all the doors locked. I said, I can't get in the van. You think the bear's going to reach up there with his paw and open the door handle? And so finally they realized they had me locked out, and one of them unlocked the door and let me get in the van, and the bear just standing there grunting. And finally he gave up and wandered on off, and all that crowd of people standing up there laughing, <laughs> like you folks. Some of them had their video cameras out filming the show. They started moving again. The traffic started flowing. And as we were coming to the end of Kate's Cove, my wife said, you know, we've always wanted to see a bear, a real live bear out in the wild. I said, yeah, we've been to Smoky Mountains a dozen times in our life, but we'd never seen a real live bear out in the wild before. She said, you know how we've always wanted to see. The key word is see. Always wanted to see a bear. Yeah, I know. She said, well, I have a confession to make. I said, what's that, sister? Broadly. She said, as we were coming into Cade's Cove today, I closed my eyes as I was riding along, and I prayed for God to let us see a real life bear.
Go ahead and clap. That's all right. God will answer any kind of a prayer from a sincere heart. She wanted to see it, and she prayed about it, and God let her see a real live bear. Close enough that it almost ate her children for dinner. But she wanted to see a bear, a, not in a cage, not in a zoo. She wanted to see a bear out in the wild. We don't have those in western Kentucky where I'm from. She wanted to see the real thing. Amen. You know, in the town, I, and, and to explain what I'm talking about, the town I live in, Madisonville, which is between Fox Holler and Possum Truck, uh, Tuesday of this week, the fire uh, truck came by. And, and one of the fire trucks came by. And, 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 and in a few minutes, another one came by. And then in a few minutes, another one came by. And I thought, man, there's something going on. And I just kept waiting. And in a little bit, a fire truck from another town come rolling by. And, and I got in the truck, and I started out after that fire truck. I wanted to see where the fire was. I wanted to go see what all the excitement was about. <laughs> Are y'all with me now? And so I followed that fire truck down into town, and it turned and went into the drive that goes to the hospital. And in the hospital parking uh, uh, campus, there is a, a, a building that's about 12 stories tall that's called Trover Tower. It's doctor's offices. And fire trucks had surrounded that tower 12-story tall building and the parking lot was full of people standing around out there in the parking lot uh, uh, several hundred people I would guess and, and the fire trucks are all around the building and, and, and I stop and inquire to someone what in the world is going on and they said well they said what happened was um, uh, someone smelled what they thought was something getting hot uh, and they panicked uh, and they went over and they pulled the fire alarm which triggered all of these fire stations and they sent the trucks in to put out the fire but there really wasn't any fire and I thought about that there was a whole lot of excitement uh, but there wasn't really any fire <laughs> and I thought my goodness <laughs> this is where a lot of churches are right now. They generate a whole lot of excitement, but there's not really any fire there. We can have peppy music that makes us clap our hands. We can, we can, we can say things and do things to make people laugh or jump up and down and generate some excitement. But what we really need is fire. If there's going to be some excitement, let there be some fire. I don't just want to see a fire truck. I want to see the fire. Amen. Y'all understand? I don't just want to see red lights. I want to see the fire. I don't want to see a red truck with a ladder on it. I want to see the fire. I don't want to see stained glass windows. I want to see a fire. I'm not interested in a steeple on top of a building. I want to see a fire. I'm not interested in a choir with pretty robes. I want to see the fire. Y'all understand what this preacher trying to say to you tonight. I'm not interested in the spectacle and the show. I'm interested in seeing the fire of God move. Clap your hands, everybody. Hallelujah. Zacchaeus wanted to see something. I was preaching down in Georgia. Just a very few weeks ago, this happened. I was preaching in Georgia. I won't say what town or give you the name of the preacher. I tried to spare him some embarrassment. I have all kind of crazy things happen to me. I sometimes wonder if other people have all these kind of crazy things happen to them. I... I don't know, I might have told you. One time I was up in Ohio. The pastor said, I'll be about to get you at 5.30 in the morning. We'll go eat breakfast. I thought, oh, Lord. We were up till after midnight. He's going to pick me up at 5.30. And so he picked me up, and we went out of town, and, and this particular pastor was about 80 years old. And I thought we were going to Shoney's. He said we were going to Shoney's for breakfast. 
there was a Shoney's right there in town, but I got in the car with him, and he drove out of town several miles. And the sun was just beginning to come up on the horizon. It was daybreak. And he pulled up into a big open field, and there was a metal building there, which I discovered was an airplane hangar. And that old brother walked over and opened the doors to that, reached in there and pulled on a long bar, and he come pulling out at his age. He pulled a single-engine airplane out of that hangar. He climbed up on that wing and got in and said, Come on, preacher! There wasn't nobody but me and him, and I knew that I didn't know how to fly a plane. And I got in the plane. I said, I thought we were going to, I, I, I thought we were going to Shoney's to eat. It was back there in town. He said, no, I said, there's another Shoney's over in Middletown. He said, I want to fly over there. They've got a little airstrip right there by the restaurant. We'll fly over there and, and we'll. And so we got up in the air, brother. And I'm sitting there, all that stuff that I don't understand, and this pastor sitting there guiding the plane, and we're up in the air. And he said, uh, brother, See this little gauge right here? There was a gauge that was between where I was sitting where he was. I said, yes. He said, would you keep your eye on that gauge for me? I said, okay. He said, if that hand starts to drop and I don't notice it, you be sure and call it to my attention. I said, okay, brother. I said, what is that gauge? Why do you need me to watch that? He said, well, that's my oil pressure gauge, and I've been having terrible problems with the oil pump on this airplane. I have these crazy things happen to me. But I was in Georgia a few days back preaching a revival for somebody, a good friend. And he says on Saturday, he thinks, I'm going to pick you up. We're going to run around. We got, he's got some errands he's got to run. And he got to drive clear across the other side of Atlanta uh, to take care of some business transaction uh, on Saturday afternoon. And he wants me to ride with him. We'll get some lunch while we're out. I said, all right, brother, that'd be great. So we get in the car, and he's driving. And if you've ever been to Atlanta, four million people, you know how the traffic is there any time of the day or night. Seven lanes on each side. Seven lanes going, seven lanes coming. And it's the middle of the afternoon, and this brother is whipping in and out of traffic, barely missing vehicles. Tractor trailers are blowing their horn at us because of the way he's cutting in and out of traffic. And I'm thinking to myself, is this man trying to show off? What in the world is wrong with this brother? There's something wrong with this brother. And, and he's just going in and out of traffic and barely missing other vehicles. And people are honking their horn. And I'm not exaggerating. They were honking their horns at us because we were getting so close when we were changing lanes. And my heart was racing away and I was praying through, God, if there's anything between me and you, Lord, forgive me now because I didn't know, you know, what the next moment was going to bring and I wanted to be ready for whatever. And we finally got off of the bypass and onto another little uh, street that was a four-lane street and it was a busy street. And I noticed as we were going down that street that we come to red lights and he just kept going. I thought, my God, <laughs> traffic, people honking horns. And then we got down close to where he was supposed to be going. He's not familiar with the place. He said, brother, he said, I need you to help me look for this place of business. He told me what the name of it was and what the address was. And I said, all right, you need me to help you look for that. He said, yes. He said, the doctor said my cataracts are almost mature. And said, I can't see. I'm telling you the honest truth. He said, I'm going in to have surgery next week and have these cataracts taken off. Said, I just can't see well enough to tell where the... And we've been out on the bypass going around Atlanta, Georgia with semis blowing the horn at us, running through red lights. And this brother says, I can't see. I said, man, I would have been glad to have drove for you. Let me drive back home. But he said, I can't see. Can't see. Zacchaeus couldn't see what he wanted to see. 
He wanted to see Jesus. He wasn't there to see some of these other fishermen that were around. He wasn't there to see Simon the Tanner. He wasn't there to see whoever else might have been in the crowd. There was only one individual in that crowd that Simon wanted, or that Zacchaeus wanted to see, and that was Jesus. And he climbed up in that sycamore tree because he wanted to see Jesus. And I've got to ask you how tonight, how bad do you want to see him? How bad do you want to see him in action? Do you want to see him back? enough to get up out of your complacency? Do you want to see a move of God bad enough that you'll come up off the ground and find you a sycamore tree to climb up in so you can get close? If you want to see Him, you got to get closer to Him. Hey, somebody! Do you want to see Him bad enough to find a sycamore tree? Oh, hallelujah! Oh, somebody might say, well, I'll see Him if it comes to me. I'm telling you, you got to go looking for Him. Glory to God. I want to see Jesus. I want to see miracles, signs, and wonders. I want to see the whole. You know what I want to see? This is the whole, uh, really the whole title of my message, I guess. I want to see what the devil don't want to see. Amen. That's what I really want to see. I want to see what the devil don't want to see. What are you talking about, preacher? The devil don't want to see Crest and Pentecostal church packed out. The devil don't want to see the Baptist congregation from across the street shut down their Sunday night service and come over and be with us in a service on Sunday night like they did the last time I was here. The devil don't want to see hungry people coming in and being filled with the Holy Ghost. The devil don't want to see it, but that's what I'm looking for. The devil don't want to see you get deliverance. The devil don't want to see you get set free from the bondage you're in. The devil don't want to see you set free from drugs and alcohol. The devil don't want to see you come out of the poverty that you've been living in. But that's what I'm looking for. Do you want to see it? Do you want to see it? How many wants to see it bad enough? You'll climb up in a sycamore tree if that's what it takes. I want to see a move of God. Clap your hands. Come on, musicians. Come on, musicians. I'm not through. Hallelujah. Preacher, what are you talking about? Ah, if I go to New York City on a sightseeing tour, I want to see the Empire State Building. Come on, somebody. I want to see the Statue of Liberty. When I go to Washington, D.C., I want to see Washington's Monument and the Lincoln Memorial. When I go to St. Louis, Missouri, I want to see the Gateway Arch. When I go to the Smoky Mountains, I want to see a bear. I want to see some mountains. When I go to the zoo, I want to see some lions and some tigers. And when I come to an apostolic church, I want to see some people in action. I want to see some people shouting and some people being healed and lost souls running to the altar and the Holy Ghost falling. I want to see what the devil don't want to see. I want you to look at somebody standing by you right now and I want you to declare with a loud voice, I want to see what the devil don't want to see. Shout it out loud. Come on, do it again. Shout it out loud. I want to see. Shout it out loud. I want to see what the devil don't want to see. I want to see Sunday school classrooms that aren't big enough because of all the kids that are coming and getting the Holy Ghost in the Sunday. I want to see platforms that aren't big enough because of all the people wanting to sing on the praise team and the choir. I want to see baptismal tanks where the cobwebs can't grow because there's a steady stream of people going down in the water in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of their sins. I I want to see. Play something. Hallelujah. You know what I want you to do? Musicians, 
I want you to get a song people can see. You know, we sing sometimes and people hear it. But there are those times when we get to singing and folks don't just hear the song, they begin to feel something. And when they begin to feel something, they begin to see something. I want to see a song tonight. I want to see a song make you rock and shake and jump. I want to see a song that makes you clap and leap for joy. I want to see a song come into your spirit. David said he put a new song in my heart and many shall see it. Glory to God. Whenever Peter was out there on the water, the Bible said he saw the wind. If you could see the wind on the ocean, I believe you can see the wind of the Holy Ghost. The Bible said Jesus told Nicodemus, no man knows where it comes from where it goes to you don't see where it came from but you know it's been there I want to see the wind of the Holy Ghost I want to see the wind of Pentecost I want to see the anointing of God I want to see the gifts of the Spirit in operation I want to see our preachers preach under Holy Ghost anointing like they've never preached before I want to see our altars full Everybody stand to your feet. Go ahead and say. When I pray, King Jesus, I know you hear me when I pray. And when I'm down here in trouble, Lord, you'll say the Holy Ghost my way. Oh, King Jesus. I know you hear me when I pray, King Jesus. I know you hear me when I pray. Oh, when I'm down here in trouble, Lord, you'll send the Holy Ghost my way. Oh, now if you're sick and afflicted and you don't know what to do, you just call on King Jesus. He will see you through, King Jesus. I know you hear me when I pray. Oh, when I'm down here in trouble, Lord, you'll send the Holy Ghost my way. Oh, King Jesus. Now, here's what I want us to do. Jesus. I know you hear I want us me to. when I pray. And I guess what I want is... I want those of you that really want to see the hand of God. And you don't know what to do. Just call on King Jesus. He will see you through. Those of you that really want to see a move of God, you want to see the hand of God. I know you hear me when I pray. I want you to move out of your seats. Come down here and find you a sycamore tree. Well, I've been going through a valley, but I can see the mountain top. I see the lights of that city. Oh, Lord, I just can't stop in Jesus. I know you hear me when I pray. Oh, when I'm down here in trouble, Lord, you'll send the Holy Ghost my way. You see, they put on Paul in prison, and along about the midnight hour, he began to call on Jesus. Jesus heard his cry. Some of the rest of you saints, why don't you come in behind these that are here in the front? I know you hear me when Let's I begin pray. to pray. When I'm down here in trouble, Lord, you'll send the Holy Ghost my way. Let's begin to pray. Church, if you're sick and afflicted and Amen. you don't know what to do, you just call on King Jesus. He will see you through, King Jesus. I know you hear me when the I saints, pray. I want you to gather in behind these that are here in the front. In trouble, Lord. Somebody come You'll together in behind them. Let's begin to pray. Way. We've got a lot of young people in this Jesus. altar tonight. They're here because they're hungry to I see you what you've talked about. They've heard moms and dads and mamas and papas talk about the mighty things of God that happened back in those days. 
But we've got young people here that want to see it again. They want to see the move of God. They want to see the supernatural. They want, they want to see the power of God in action. Come on, saints. Let's gather around these, would you? Let's gather around them right now and begin to pray. God, let them see what they never seen. Here in trouble, Lord. You'll send the Holy Ghost my way. Shock up on us, I'm going through a valley, but I can see the mountain. You know, I see the Lord of that sea. Shine down on us, see the Mahaya. Hallelujah. Jesus, I know you hear me when I pray. Oh, when I'm down here in trouble, Lord, you'll send the Holy Ghost my way. Oh, King Jesus. I know you hear me when I pray, oh King Jesus. If you don't have the Holy Ghost, you I can get it right now. When I pray. Oh, when I'm you want to see something in God? You want to see miracles? You want to see the supernatural? Remember when Jesus touched that blind man? He had to get spiritual sight before he could see the natural things. Come tonight, receive the Spirit of God. Receive the forgiveness and mercy of God. Receive the name of Jesus in water baptism. Receive the power of the Holy Ghost. And then you'll begin to see what you've never seen before. You'll begin to see God pull down strongholds. He will see it through, King Jesus. I know you hear me when I pray. I've seen God raise the dead. You see, they put on holy prison. I've seen God raise the dead. I've seen God heal the blinded eyes. Jesus, Jesus heard his prayer. If he did it then, he can do it again. I stood in front of a tornado and rebuked it in the name of Jesus. And I saw God lift it and make it go over. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Don't you want to see the mighty things of God in your life? Don't you want to see your prayers answered? Don't you want to see what God can do in your situation? Reach out to Him right now. God, anoint their eyes with eye salve that they can see. Hallelujah. Come on. Somebody's about to get the Holy Ghost. Somebody in these altars is about to get the Holy Ghost right now. Some of these young men over here, some of these young ladies, about to get the Holy Ghost right now. Come on. That's right. That's it. Come on. Receive what God's got for you right now. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise the Lord. In the name of Jesus, I command you to Begin to see them in the name of Jesus. God begin to work in her life in ways that she's never known before. In the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, they put on all in prison. And along about the midnight hour, he began to call on Jesus. And Jesus heard his prayer. Jesus, I know you hear me when I pray. The Holy Ghost is all over you. here in trouble, Lord, you'll send the Holy Ghost my way. Oh, King Jesus. I know you hear me when I pray, oh King Jesus. Lord, I know you hear me when I pray, oh when I'm down here in trouble, Lord, you'll send the Holy Ghost my way. Oh, now if you're sick and afflicted and you don't know what to do, you just call on King Jesus, for he will see you through, King Jesus. 